never get tired of wearing this. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of 10 Years Later, and we are talking about Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The film was released on May 22nd, 2008. It was directed by Steven Spielberg with a story written by George Lucas and several others, and the screenplay being written by David Coep. And least to say, 10 years later, this movie still kind of blows. Now, admittedly, when I went and saw the film, I wasn't under the idea that a movie or a sequel 19 years after the previous film wouldn't be a bad thing. Well, at least to say I was a little bit naive. The film, in a sense, does try to pay homage to the original trilogy, even though it didn't even actually have its original DOP. Douglas Solicum was the DOP for the three original Indiana Jones films. His last actual ever job as a DOP, in fact, was the Last Crusade. And in fact, it looked like he retired until he died a few years ago. So when Jenis Kaczynski, presently DOP of Steven Spielberg's project for every single movie, he did a lot of great camera work in terms of giving homage to what Douglas did. Some of the objects and materials and parts of people that he would focus on were somewhat looking cartoonish, but that's exactly what the comics, like the old stories that Indiana Jones was inspired by. And I liked that. If anything, my favorite part of this movie is how it's shot. There is a lot of that overshadow, this, that, that overly bright light, that softening that's on everyone's heads that kind of comes in later in the film, but it's not as overly prevalent as it is in current day Steven Spielberg films. Harrison Ford is good-ish as Indy. This is a character he actually really cares about. But once the other characters like Shia LaBeouf and Marion Wavenwood and Kate Blanchett start coming into the story, especially him and Ravenwood, I don't know why, but it just seems that the two don't really have that connection that they did in the first film. I think that Indiana Jones's introduction to Marion Ravenwood in the first film is one of my favorite introductions of a character of all time. The silhouette work, everything. But in this film, they seem like seniors who are babbling and trying to make really, really not funny senior jokes. I don't know, it just doesn't seem that they flow well. John Hurt is just there babbling throughout the entire movie, and Ray Weinstone that's a poorly written character if you've ever seen one. He's bad. He's terrible. He's like a triple agent or some garbage, but he's literally there to continue the story, but for no logical means. Shia LaBeouf actually, in fact, is not that bad in this movie. He's not as absolutely incredibly nauseating as he is now, but in this film, he's actually very subtle. He works well with the other actors, but apparently there was some conflict between him and Harrison Ford. But of course, at the time, the kid was being heralded as basically being the next Indiana Jones, the next Harrison Ford, especially with that ending where he uh, picks up the hat and he's almost about to put it on, but then Harrison Ford grabs it out of his hand and saves the industry. The villains, the Russian villains are still not that good. The entire concept of the aliens is still really far-fetched. And all of the elements of this movie are, in a sense, just parts from the previous films. And if you're wondering why, there's two reasons. One of them is written by David Coab, and if any of you guys don't know who that is, he was the writer of Jurassic Park The Lost World. Yeah, the really bad one. Not the really, really bad one, but the bad one. And guess what? He's apparently writing the fifth one, so you can already pretty much say this one's going to be shit too. On the other side of it, Kathleen Kennedy is an executive producer of this film. Not to say that her influences of what she's been doing currently with the Star Wars movies was as impactful in this film, but you can see that she definitely has some aspects into it. There's not much of an agenda as there is now that's kind of being permeated through the Star Wars movies. This film is literally just parts from different ones. And it's almost as bad as The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens literally is A New Hope. This one is elements of the first film and The Last Crusade with a little bit of dipping into the Temple of Doom here and there. I definitely say that Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull still has not aged as well as it has and it's still not as good as 
everyone hoped it would be. I haven't seen this movie since I saw it in theaters over 10 years ago, and I'm probably not going to ever see it again after this, because that sucked. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, maybe leave a like. If you're interested, subscribe. I will have another one coming up next, and it's actually a really, really bad movie that we'll be talking about in the next episode. So until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.